wow, that was cool. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, welcome to a whole new kind of heavy bow gun. And yes, today's goal, as it often is, is to see just how wackily we can play this game. How successful we can be while not playing weapons anywhere close to the way they are intended to be played, and having a ton of fun doing it along the way. So without any further ado, you blooming little chrysanthemums, I present to you a set called Manual Freebird. What's wrong with you? Starting off with why this build exists and what makes it worth playing then, followed by what the build itself actually is, and then the playstyle to adopt while using the build. When it comes to what this build even remotely is, that is answered by a single question. What if you could kill a monster using the heavy bow gun without ever actually spending a single piece of ammo of any type? And not only is it massively successful, but is an absolute ton of fun and it's really safe. Like, honestly, this is easily among my favorite builds in Iceborne so far. So the entire mantra of this build is essentially taking advantage of the clutch claw tenderize attack of the wyvern snipe heavy bow gun. Gun. That's right, this is a build focused around the clutch, so manual because like a manual car you'll be hitting the clutch a hell of a lot, free because no ammo expenditures, and bird because you wind up flying all over the place. Manual free bird. What the fuck is going on? This build, ladies and gentlemen, will let you viably kill monsters within quest time limits while using no other heavy bow gun attack than your clutch claw grapple and clutch claw attack. Let that sink in for a moment. Moving on to the build itself then, we'll begin with the core of any Monster Hunter set, the weapon. Being that this attack is affected by both raw attack and crit, as well as requiring a wyvern snipe heavy bowgun to even function in the first place, we've gone with the Black Diablos heavy bowgun, as once fully modded and augmented up, it's just the clear winner in this category. We have one of each attack, affinity, defense, and health regen augments to fill up all the slots, and on the side of bowgun mods we have four close range up mods. Nice. And a lonely little wyvern snipe mod, which I'll explain the existence of in the playstyle section a little bit later on. Moving on to the set itself, we have to consider what exactly affects this attack, and to simplify it down to the real nice and easies, it doesn't count as any sort of ammo, so none of the normal shots, or piercing shots, or spread shot skills will help. However, not only do you tend to sheath the weapon most of the time for mobility, but the clutch claw attack itself is considered a draw attack, so leaning towards draw skills is ideal. Therefore, crit draw and Valkana's four set frost crap, which essentially makes this build even possible. Goddamn right. And of course, full earplugs, as we plan to be attaching to the monster 99% of the fight, it is just extremely beneficial to not get that super drawn out knockdown animation from being roared off a body part. Filling in the decorations, then, this build starts to actually look a lot like a meta crit draw set for a melee weapon, just without the handicraft. And in total, we have five earplugs, four attack boost, because raw damage good when you've reached full affinity, three health boost for survival, three crit boost, because every hit should be a crit, three critical draw to make every hit a crit, three quick sheath, as you'll be sheathing a lot, two recovery up, and two Divine Blessing as little bonus survival skills, one Critical Eye, one Agitator because it is simply the best filler skill, one Flinch Free because it's there, non-elemental boost as we are using a non-elemental weapon and that is just a straight up 5% damage boost, two Tool Specialists stored away in our Rock City Mantle to make our Temporal come back online just that little bit quicker, and an unused Crit Element from Velcana 2 set as well as the very, very strong Velcana 4 set of Frostcraft. So as far as Affinity goes, the weapon starts at negative 20%, we gain 10% from Affinity Augment, 5% from hitting 4 attack boost, and 5% from a single critical eye, with the 100% on top from crit draw, evening it out to a classy and perfect 100%. Oh, this is as for the mantles, I am making solid use of both Temporal and Rock City mantles for the pure purpose of allowing me to finish more Clutch Claw attacks, however, Evasion Mantle is a fantastic secondary option, as it is just a fantastic mantle. Now this build, as usual, is of course limited by my jewel collection, for example, if the Draw Slash Medicine and Crit Slash Medicine in this build were instead Draw Slash Vitality and Crit Slash Vitality, two of the Vitality jewels that are just in the build could be swapped out for Active Tool Specialist rather than only having it active on the mantle, which would of course allow you to have both mantles back faster which, while not necessarily necessary by any means, is just a nice little comfort bonus when playing a high-flying build such as this. To put all of this into some sort of nice little damage number-based perspective, this build without any external damage buffs, meaning your demon drugs, demon powders, might seeds, all that stuff, it hits the cart in the training room for 768, and it hits the cart for 816 once it's been weakened, which is of course important, as the whole point of this build is based around an attack that weakens parts. And to show you this in motion, it's time to properly move on to the playstyle of this build, and hold on to your hats because this is extremely complex. What? <laughs> 
no, no, that was that was just a joke. You can you can relax. This is actually quite possibly one of the simplest builds that I've ever played from a button input standpoint, at least. But it seriously punishes you for not knowing a monster's attack patterns, but also seriously benefits you if you do know a monster's attack patterns. The basic gameplay loop of this build is to wait until the monster attacks, clutch onto a part that is not involved in the attack animation, fire a shot into it, and fly off, and then repeat. You can use Wyvern Snipe with the Wyvern Snipe mod that we have installed to hit a weak point either when entering a zone or just if the monster is in the middle of a super dangerous animation. It is just a ranged option that you have once in a while, but it does just do less damage than your Clutch Claw attacks, so really the only thing that you want to do is Clutch Claw attacks. This will net you reasonable damage and keep you extremely safe. However, if like me, you would prefer to deal even more damage and are willing to put up with a touch of danger, I have an interesting proposal for you. Okay, faggot! What's next? Every monster has weak points. We all know this. This is where the damage is mostly supposed to funnel into. However, many monsters have parts that are just sort of half weak. They become those beautiful orange numbers only after being tenderized. The weakest parts of most monsters is the head. And let's be honest, if you're using the Clutch Claw as your main attack, the majority of monsters will knock you flat off of their face every time you try. The face is a hot zone for attacks and super dangerous to clutch to. So to properly make use of this build, you have to find those little half weak points. You need to properly watch how a monster fights and watch the half weak points. You'll learn pretty quickly that the majority of the monsters in the game have a body part that they only attack with once in a blue moon. For example, Namiel's tail. It isn't the weakest body part by any means. However, Namiel isn't huge on weak points in the first place, but you can spam this tail for the entire hunt, never once getting knocked off. The only damage I even took in this hunt was in between the clutches if I landed in a bad spot and reacted badly. But the point there is to find these places. One word of advanced warning though, wings are a problem area for this build. When you use a tenderized attack on the wing with heavy bow gun, it does of course do the actual tenderization on the wing, but due to the angle of this attack and the location that you grip to while using the clutch claw, the shot itself actually hits the body, which 9 times out of 10 just gets you little gray pointless damage numbers. There is logic in what he says. So when it comes down to it, this build is far more about understanding your target than understanding your weapon. Almost like transforming the weapon from a heavy bow gun closer to a greatsword and winding up with a super fun build full of cinematic as fuck gameplay that has the potential to be beefy and powerful as all hell against certain monsters. If you can find a super weak point that isn't involved in many attacks, like Fulgur Anjanath here, you'll be showing monsters a really, really bad time. I mean, you know, for them. It's a great time for you. A very, very great time. I swear, every time I think the game has shown us every playstyle, it has another one that just crops up. The game may be labeled as having 14 weapons, but when you count all the other intended ways to play the weapons, and then things like this, which are much more likely just a byproduct of the changes rather than a completely intended playstyle in itself, there really is just a build for everyone. There's a way to play this game that would make any person happy, and just knowing that makes me personally very happy. Alright everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been the Manual Freebird Heavy Bowgun Clutch Gloss Set. Did you like this set? Which weapons and playstyles would you like to see us mess around with next? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love, so let's start with something simple and say, oh, we love your eyes. When they're watching us play video games, when we make a bunch of jokes that are kind of lame, or when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters or important, important news about the kingdom and Amelia. Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here, talking about the things you want to hear. So if you want to be the first to hear, like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer. Some of you are patrons, even though we are all the noobs and you're the pros, there's nothing we can do to thank you. No, really, there's nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.